Jerusalem is an epicenter of biblical prophecies of end-time events, one of which is the prophecy of war in the land of Israel, along with an attack by nations against Jerusalem. Just as predicted, there is an ongoing gruesome war between Israel and Hamas, which has caused many to wonder if the return of the Messiah has come. Is the moment finally upon us? Will the prophecies come to pass, or will unexpected peace prevail? Let's dive in to see all the clues as the world watches with great anticipation. In the Bible, Jerusalem is repeatedly mentioned as the city of God, or the holy city, where his presence dwells and his temple should be built. The temple on Mount Zion is the focal point of God's presence in the city. This divine selection is emphasized in passages like 2 Chronicles 6, 6, where Solomon declares that God has chosen Jerusalem as the place for his name and David as the leader of his people, and Psalm 132, 13, 14, which states that God has chosen Zion as his dwelling place, and he desires to rest there forever. The establishment of modern Israel was strongly influenced by the displacement and persecution experienced by millions of Jewish people during World War II, particularly during the Holocaust. This traumatic event, coupled with the desire for a safe homeland, generated increased support for the creation of a Jewish state. After World War II, the Jews were scattered across various regions, a phenomenon referred to as the Jewish diaspora or dispersion. This dispersion had a profound impact on the formation and growth of modern Israel as it fueled the rise of the Zionist movement, which advocated for the establishment of a Jewish homeland. The survivors of the Holocaust, in particular, felt that Europe held no future for Jews and sought a place where they would no longer be a vulnerable minority. So there was a large influx of Jewish immigrants to Palestine, which greatly influenced the development of modern Israel. These immigrants brought with them a diverse range of skills, knowledge, and experiences that contributed to the growth of infrastructure, economy, culture, and society within Israel. From a religious standpoint, the establishment of modern Israel is viewed by some believers as a spiritual revival for the Jewish people. It is seen as fulfilling God's promises and a sign of the chosen people returning to their faith. Interpretations of biblical prophecies further strengthen the connection between the establishment of Israel and religious beliefs. Passages such as Ezekiel 37, 1, 14 depict God breathing life into a valley filled with dry bones, signifying the revival and reunification of the scattered Israelites. Other prophecies in Jeremiah and Isaiah speak of God gathering his people from all nations, bringing them back to their land and promising forgiveness, a deep relationship, and prosperity. Additionally, the establishment of modern Israel is seen as the fulfillment of God's covenant with Abraham, where he promised Abraham and his descendants the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession. Also, Jerusalem plays a central role in many biblical prophecies concerning Israel. Zechariah 8, 3, for example, states that God will return to Zion and dwell in Jerusalem. This highlights the significance of Jerusalem in the fulfillment of God's plan for Israel. Furthermore, it is written in the Bible that Jerusalem will be a focal point in the end times, that nations will assault Jerusalem, and the Antichrist will demand worship in the city, marking preparations for the end of the age and the anticipated return of the Lord. The Bible also shows that Jerusalem will play a central role in future events and in establishing God's kingdom on earth. Zechariah 14, 3, four prophecies that the Lord will fight against nations and his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives before Jerusalem during these times. In history, Jerusalem gained religious significance during the reigns of David and Solomon in the Hebrew Bible. This city holds deep reverence in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and one of the centers of focus in this city is the Temple Mount, which is considered the holiest place on earth and the third holiest Islamic site. The connection between Jerusalem, Israel, and religious faith underscores the significance of this historic and sacred land in the hearts and minds of believers. Are ancient prophecies unfolding through the revival of Israel's barren land and the Third Temple's rebirth? Yes, there have been lots of prophecies about the great city of Jerusalem and the Israelis, some of which have been fulfilled, some of which have been partly fulfilled, and others which haven't. 
We'll start with the fulfillment of the biblical prophecy of the transformation of the once barren land into a fruitful one. The Old Testament references God's promise of abundance and fruitfulness to the people of Israel. For instance, Zechariah's prophecy in Zechariah 8.12 foretold the land's prosperity with the words, The seed will grow well, the vine will yield its fruit, the ground will produce its crops. And just as it was prophesied, the once barren and desolate Israel had overcome the challenges posed by its arid climate and limited water resources through advancements in agricultural practices. The country has become a global leader in agricultural technology, employing sophisticated irrigation systems like drip irrigation to maximize crop yields while minimizing water usage. Research and development efforts have also led to the development of drought-resistant crops and varieties that require less water, contributing to increased productivity and water conservation. Water management strategies also played a role in ensuring a stable supply of fresh water. Desalination, in particular, addressed water scarcity by converting seawater into usable water and land reclamation projects, and soil improvement techniques rehabilitated previously unproductive areas, transforming them into fertile agricultural land. The progress made in agriculture and the greening of the land can be seen as a realization of these prophecies. Another significant biblical prophecy about Israel that has been partly fulfilled is the reconstruction of the Third Temple. This is based on passages found in various books of the Bible, particularly Ezekiel and Daniel. Ezekiel provides a detailed vision of a future temple. In chapters 40, 48, the prophet receives a divine revelation outlining the measurements, design, and splendor of this temple. It is described as a magnificent structure where God's presence will dwell among his people. Similarly, the book of Daniel mentions the desecration and subsequent restoration of a future temple. In Daniel 9.27, a ruler is mentioned who will make a covenant, but later cease sacrifices and offerings. Many also interpret this as a reference to the desecration of a future temple. These prophecies have sparked discussions and expectations regarding the rebuilding of the third temple. They outline the significance of this temple as a place of worship, where God's covenant with his people can be fully observed. Some also view the temple's reconstruction as a crucial sign of the imminent arrival of the Messiah, as prophesied by Hebrew prophets. The third temple holds great religious significance for Jews and Christians. It is seen as a symbol of redemption and a central place for worship, allowing Jews to uphold their covenant with God fully. After the destruction of the first and second temples by the Babylonians in 586 BCE and the Romans in 70 CE, which was a significant loss for the Jewish people, there has been anticipation of the third temple due to specific biblical prophecies. In Christianity, interpretations of the third temple vary. Some consider the building of the third temple significant in Christian eschatology about the end times. The New Testament teaches that the New Covenant is marked by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in believers, making every believer's body and gatherings of believers a temple. Therefore, some Christians believe the need for a physical third temple is diminished or superseded. In Judaism, the first and second temples were central to religious life and served as the place where God resided. Therefore, rebuilding the temple represents returning to spiritual completeness and fulfilling biblical prophecies. For the Orthodox and conservative Jews, it is believed that the Third Temple is a crucial aspect of their faith and is connected to their beliefs in the Messiah. There are differing views within Judaism regarding its construction. Theological beliefs connect the construction of the Third Temple to eschatology and messianic expectations. Many Jewish traditions anticipate that the coming of the Messiah will coincide with the rebuilding of the Temple. It is believed that the Messiah will restore Israel's sovereignty, gather all Jews to their homeland, and rebuild the temple in Jerusalem as a sign of redemption and ultimate peace. In contrast, others argue that the temple can be constructed by human effort. The third temple is also associated with reinstating sacrifices according to ancient Jewish rituals described in the Torah. These sacrifices are believed to provide atonement for sins and serve as acts of worship, and their resumption is viewed as a sign that the third temple will be built. However, there is a challenge that may either stop or delay the rebuilding of the third temple. 
The construction of the Third Temple in Jerusalem carries significant political implications, as it would involve changing the status quo on the Temple Mount Haram al-Sharif complex. This area holds religious importance for both Jews and Muslims, as it houses the Western Wall, a holy site for Jews, and the Al-Aqsa Mosque, a significant Islamic site. Because of that, the rebuilding of the Third Temple could potentially lead to tensions and conflicts between these two communities. The Dome of the Rock and the proposed Third Temple are two significant religious and historical sites in Jerusalem that have been sources of conflict and debate for many years. The Dome of the Rock, an influential Islamic sacred site, was constructed in the late 7th century CE on the Temple Mount, known as Haram al-Sharif in Arabic. It is believed to be the location from which Prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven. Due to its implications for Israeli-Palestinian relations and regional stability, the issue surrounding the Dome of the Rock and the proposed Third Temple, to prevent violence, a status quo arrangement was reached. This arrangement entails Israel having overall security control, while Jordan's Islamic Waqf manages day-to-day -day affairs at the site. Throughout history, there have been instances where some Muslims have disputed the claim that the Temple Mount in Jerusalem was the location of the first and second Jewish temples. These disputes stem from a combination of religious and political factors. During the early Islamic period, Muslim scholars debated the precise site of the Jewish temples. While some scholars believed the temples were on the Temple Mount, others held differing opinions. One notable example is the case of Abd al-Malik ibn Marwan, who served as the Umayyad Caliph from 685 to 705 CE. He commissioned the construction of the Dome of the Rock on the Temple Mount, regarded as a significant Islamic architectural achievement. Some historians argue that this construction was a deliberate effort to assert Islamic dominance over Judaism and Christianity by appropriating their sacred sites. This suggests there may have been a deliberate denial or downplaying of the Jewish connection to the Temple Mount during this period. This argument as to whether or not the Temple Mount was the location of the previous temple went on and on until something catastrophic happened, which revealed evidence of the second temple on the Temple Mount. In the aftermath of a powerful earthquake that struck Jerusalem, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, located on the Temple Mount, suffered significant damage. The earthquake mainly affected the southern wall of the mosque, raising concerns about its stability and the need for restoration. During the subsequent restoration work, British archaeologist Robert Hamilton conducted excavations around the Al-Aqsa Mosque and its surroundings. His excavations yielded findings that shed light on the historical significance of the Temple Mount, specifically regarding the existence of the Second Temple. One notable discovery made by Hamilton was a large and impressive staircase leading from the southern wall of the Temple Mount towards an area known as Robinson's Arch. He assumed that ancient pilgrims likely used this staircase to access the Second Temple. Another significant finding was a well-preserved mikveh, a Jewish ritual bath located near the southeast corner of the Temple Mount, which suggests the existence of a Jewish community close to the Temple Mount during that era. In addition to these discoveries, Hamilton discovered coins from the Second Temple period, which were evidence of human activity and habitation during that specific period. As if that wasn't enough, Hamilton also found remains of a Byzantine mosaic about half a meter below the damaged mosque's floor. The mosaic, along with other artifacts like mosaic stones, column capitals, and marble fragments, indicated the presence of structures from the Byzantine period, 324, 638 CE, within the earth taken from the Temple Mount. With this revelation, will the Islams vacate the Temple Mount for the Jews to build the Third Temple? That we're not sure of, but the Jews on their own seem very resilient because, over the years, they have been tirelessly making preparations for the Third Temple. The groundwork for the reconstruction of the Third Temple began with the establishment of the Temple Institute, situated in Jerusalem. This organization is dedicated to studying and preparing for the eventual reconstruction of the temple. Their efforts have focused on researching and accurately recreating the sacred vessels and instruments necessary for temple service with the exact specifications mentioned in ancient Jewish texts. 
One of the notable accomplishments of the Temple Institute is the creation of a replica of the Golden Menorah, a seven-branched candelabrum used in the Second Temple. Additionally, the organization has constructed a replica of the Golden Altar, which was used for burning incense in the Second Temple. They have also prepared a replica of the Table of Showbread, which held twelve loaves representing the twelve tribes of Israel. Also, a copper laver, a ceremonial washing basin used by priests before entering the temple, which enables adherence to proper purification rituals, was created, as well as the high priest's garments. One crucial aspect of the preparations involves the red heifer without blemish, required for purification rituals preceding the construction of the third temple. Consequently, a Christian group donated some, while various organizations and individuals have dedicated their efforts to breeding these red heifers that meet the specific biblical requirements. Now here's the shocker. Recently, the Temple Institute reenacted the water libation ceremony as it was performed in ancient times. The purpose of these reenactments is to educate people about the significance of the ceremony and to express their longing for the day when the temple will be rebuilt. Led by Rabbi Yisrael Ariel, the founder of the Temple Institute, and esteemed rabbis such as Rabbi Dov Lior, Rabbi Aryeh Stern, Rabbi Shmuel Eliyahu, Rabbi David Chai Hakohen, Rabbi Ram Jakohen, Rabbi Menachem Bornstein, and Rabbi Uri Cherki, the event took place in Jerusalem's Old City. The participants, dressed in priestly garments mandated by the Bible, included priests and Levites carrying musical instruments and unique clothing. The procession began at the Dung Gate, also known as Shar Hashpot, where the group gathered. With the Levites leading the way and playing joyful melodies on drums, violin, guitar, and clarinet, the participants proceeded through the city, singing and dancing. Along the route, they passed by archaeological remains of the ancient city of David, went through an Arab village, and eventually reached the Shiloh, Siloam, Spring. At designated stops during the procession, the sound of four-foot-long pure silver trumpets added a touch of solemnity to the event. Although the reenactment was not open to the public, a select group of ten participants had the privilege of drawing water from the Shiloh pool. This pool was the starting point for pilgrims who would journey to Jerusalem for the biblical feasts. Pilgrims would cleanse themselves in the pool before ascending to the inner court of the Temple Mount to present their sacrificial offerings. The golden jug was ceremoniously filled at the Shiloh pool, symbolizing the drawing of water for the libation. The procession then returned to the mountaintop, and in an open area near the western wall, a model altar was set up, adorned with leafy willow branches, as was done during temple times, along with the necessary utensils used in the ancient temple. The ceremony lasted for 15 hours and became the focal point of celebration, attracting participants from various locations. The reenactment of the water libation ceremony by the Temple Institute serves to honor the historical traditions and rituals associated with the temple. It allows participants to experience a glimpse of the past and express their hope for the future rebuilding of the Third Temple in Jerusalem. What is the most recent terrifying prophecy about Israel and what are its implications? Amongst all the biblical prophecies about Jerusalem, it appears that the most terrifying of all is about to happen. The books of Daniel, 2 Thessalonians and Revelation provide insights into the role of the Antichrist in the end times. According to these prophecies, the Antichrist is depicted as an influential and deceitful figure who opposes God and seeks global dominion. These prophecies indicate that the rise of the Antichrist will occur amidst a world engulfed in turmoil and chaos. He will present himself as a charismatic leader, offering peace and stability. However, his true intention is to deceive people and lead them away from God. The Antichrist will perform extraordinary signs and miracles, gaining widespread influence and support. During the end times, the Antichrist will establish a single global government and demand worship from all individuals. He will persecute believers and attempt to eradicate genuine worship of God. This period is known as the Great Tribulation, characterized by intense suffering and spiritual deception. Regarding its implications for Israel, 
Biblical prophecies say that the Antichrist will initially make a covenant or treaty with Israel at the beginning of his reign. However, he will ultimately break this agreement and turn against Israel, leading to a time of unparalleled distress for the nation. As we all know, there's an ongoing war between the Israelis and Hamas, which led to the death of thousands of people. While the Antichrist is yet to reveal himself, it can be said that this prophecy of the Antichrist has been partly fulfilled. The fulfillment of these events can be seen as part of God's plan for Israel and his church at large. With Israel standing as the focal point of the Messiah's coming, and with the track record of the biblical prophecies about Israel that have been fulfilled, it can be said that the end is near, and the coming return of the Messiah is imminent, if not very close. We all should make our paths straight and our hearts right with God in readiness for the rapture. With strong devotion to Jesus and unwavering faith, let's be prepared for the return of the Messiah. Christ is King and will reign forever. Please like and subscribe for more information on the fulfillment of biblical prophecies in Israel.